So, my computer broke. I'm not happy. Let's fix it, shall we? Alright ladies and gentlemen, so I'm the sound tracker and as I mentioned before, my computer broke. Now, more specifically, the sound system isn't working properly. And this is a really, really big deal to me because I use this PC for everything. I use it for gaming, I use it for YouTube videos, I use it for editing, I use it for music, I use it for testing audio for things, I use it for YouTube videos. And having it not work properly is a really, really big deal for me. So, let me show you exactly what's wrong with it and how I intend to go about fixing it. So, my computer has two audio jacks. There's one in the back, which is where the speakers are plugged in, and there's one in the front right here for, you know, if you, if you need to use headphones. I do pretty much like every computer today. Yeah. Um, so, the issue that I'm having is that when I try and play something through the speakers, it, it doesn't sound right, and um, it doesn't, uh, specifically, it doesn't set up the stereo field properly. Now, the stereo field is the distance between how much you're supposed to hear in the left speaker and how much you're supposed to hear in the right speaker back here. It doesn't sound right on my computer, and the audio jack is the problem. And to show you, I mean, I'll plug the audio out from the back of the computer into the line in in the same back of the computer, and I'm going to play you a loop through the, uh, through the audio so you can hear exactly what's going wrong. This is a left-right audio test. You should be listening to both channels right now, both channels active. Now the audio is only in the left channel, left channel only. The right channel is currently active. Only the right channel should be heard currently. And right here is where I have to insert some new footage because I've just found something important out. Now, I'm in the process of editing this video, but on a different computer, and with a different set of speakers that I know works properly. So, through that computer, the audio clip that I've just recorded from this PC sounds entirely normal. The way it sounds through these speakers, though, is very different. It sounds like the left-hand speaker is coming through the right side, and the right-hand speaker is coming through the left side. And this means to me that through the test that I've just done, the audio jack isn't the problem. This means that there's an issue with the speakers, and while I'm not quite sure what that issue is yet, but it ruins the initial premise of the video, <laughs> so I'd like to get on with doing the review and come back to the speaker issue later. And that being said, I bought a device for my computer that will allow me to bypass the sound jack on the motherboard entirely, and run it straight into my amplifier over there. So let's take a look. 
starting with the box, I mean, well, it's a decently shaped box, nice and square, beautiful right angles on it, uh, perfect for holding a thing and some stuff, uh, yeah, whatever you deem to put inside of it. Uh, it's a coffee flavor of brown with some darker espresso lines, you know, gentle curvations, uh, whose purpose it seems is to inform you that there are, in fact, things inside of a box. What's inside of the box, though? Well, that's gonna have to wait until I can learn better timing and editing. And, uh, ah, here we go. So, we have a USB cable here, and honestly, I'm glad that this one was supplied because I, uh, I didn't have a spare. Um, so it's very, very good to see something like that in here. Um, high quality, apparently. But then the, uh, quality of the cable isn't really the, uh, whole point of this video, so let's move on to something else in here. Uh, what else is there? Let's see, we've got, um, a power cable here. Also good to see since, uh, my electricity isn't sent over Wi-Fi. Let's set that aside for now, though, because that'll be more important later. And, uh, let me see, what's this over here? Ah, good, so it's a, it's an AC adapter with a barrel plug, and this is a multi-volt... Focus. Focus! Fo uh, there we go. Okay, you see, so if you shout at your technology enough times, it cooperates. Uh, anyways, th this is a multi-voltage adapter, which is good if you live in other parts of the world, because if you swap out the power cable with one for your country's electrical standard, you don't need to mess around with power transformers. Otherwise, in the box, we have papers in here with uh, languages that I can't actually read or write in, so, uh, and... Huh? It's at times like these I really wish I could read other languages, because I'd really like to know what that says. Moving on to the manual, though, I'm kind of curious about what I'm going to find inside of here, because I bought this from China, and honestly, they have a bit of a reputation for manuals. Dear users, thank you for buying DAC X6, DAC X3, DAC SQ5, FX01, Digital Analog to Converter from FX Audio. Advanced design and built-in audio file components with mini fashion appearance, easy operation, and perfect sound quality. DAC X6, DAC X3, DAC SQ5, FX01 will entertain you total differently. For the sake of safety before operating it, please read the manual and keep it for reference anytime you need. You know, it's it's not actually the worst that I've ever seen, despite some of the preface. I mean, I've seen a couple of really, really heavily mistranslated manuals before, and from the general skim that I've had of this thing, at least I can sort of tell what's supposed to be done with the DAC. I'm also really just glad to have it at all. I mean, how many companies actually take the time anymore to print out a manual and put it inside of the box? There's also this little thing over here, which uh, has more writing on it that I can't really translate, and I don't know what it says at all. So, over there you go. On to the main event here, though. This is a USB DAC, or Digital to Analog Converter. I bought it on Amazon to bypass the sound issue that I was having, and, well, basically I can plug my computer into this thing through USB, and sound information will be handled and decoded by the DAC instead of by the computer. Let me just get this out of the wrap, and, ah, there we go. It gives a good first impression. I mean, the build quality is very, very solid, and it has an all-metal construction, so for its size, it has a really nice heft to it. I bought this one for a few reasons, the first of which is that it's one of the very few that has a USB interface. I mean, the others were mostly just coaxial and optical, which are the respective connectors there and there on the back. The audio coming out is an analog signal through these RCA connectors. And that's where I'm going to be hooking up my amplifier. Other than that, there's the power jack on the back here, and that pretty much covers the I.O. portion. Coming around to the front, on the far left here, there's a power toggle, and it's honestly just as solid as the rest of the unit. I mean, I was expecting it to be a little bit more flimsy, but there's something about it that just delights my fingertips. The next toggle is the source selector, which changes between the three inputs on the back, and it feels a little bit less sturdy, but I honestly think that's just down to the fact that it has to cram so much function into such a small form factor. On the far right is a volume control that, from what I saw in the manual during my break in filming, only really controls the headphones, and that's honestly fine by me because that means it can also serve as a makeshift headphone amplifier for my computer. It feels nice and sturdy, you know, solid construction and all that, but I really want to see what this thing can do at this point, so let's plug it in.
All right, so I've gotten the, uh, the, uh, the DAC hooked up. I've gotten my uh, amplifier turned on. Now, uh, I'd like to just try a little small tester song to see if everything's working as it's supposed to be. So back over to the computer for a sec. And that's not working as I planned it. All right, so that didn't exactly work out uh, the way I wanted it to. Um, the big problem that I'm having right now is uh, troubleshooting, and when you have a computer that has a whole bunch of stuff hooked up to it at the same time, a lot of it with very, very similar um, capabilities, well, uh, troubleshooting is just something you have to deal with. So uh, let me just play this one more time and see what happens. Yeah, so that's, um, that's still coming through the speakers that are plugged in through the uh, the jack in the back of the computer. Um, let me just see this real quick. So the mixer over here is still sending, so so the audio data is still going through the uh, the regular jack. Um, speaker, yeah, Realtek High Definition Audio is still selected. So let me try this. And that, that's really all troubleshooting is, just trial and error until you figure out what was wrong. And that's still wrong. It's uh, still playing even though I selected that for some reason through the speakers that I don't want it to play through. So what's going on? Okay, thank you. So what's going on? Let me see really quickly what's over here. That's still the, that's the properties for the wrong one. <laughs> um, mixer. Um, uh, yeah, these are the properties for the wrong one. So speakers DAC, uh, this one, uh, speaker properties. Let me just ah, there we go. Uh, ah, advanced. So this uh, so this will allow me to see if uh, audio can come through the actual speakers anyway. And surprisingly, that worked. Okay, so that tells me a lot of really really good things over here. So. Uh, the audio can be sent and just actively was sent through the DAC into my amplifier and out of the speakers that I want it to, uh, where it, where I just spent a whole bunch of time setting it up. So what I need to figure out now is how in the computer to get sound all in general from YouTube from every other source into the DAC. And if I'm not mistaken, it's over here. Uh, devices and printers. Ah, uh, here we are, unspecified. So this is probably part of the problem. Category. Why are you registered as an input device? I get why the microphone is, but that's just weird. All right. Sound settings. Here we go. So the sound. There we go. Here's the thing. So the default device is still set to the onboard um, audio components. And I want that set over here since it's ready to go. We will set that to the default and hope that that works. Yes! It worked! Oh, I am so happy because that means that, uh, well, it works for the purpose that I bought it for at least, which, uh, whew, man, you'd be surprised how many times I've had things not work when I bought them for a specific thing. That being the case, let's get on with the review. So since this is working, let's see what else this thing can do. We know the USB input works for the computer, but for this next part, I'll need to grab my DVD player. Earlier I mentioned that on the back of the DAC that there are both coaxial and optical connections next to the USB port for the computer, and the DVD player that I use has those two jacks as well. It's just a matter of plugging them in and trying it out. The DAC is meant to translate digital data into analog sound information, hence the name Digital to Analog Converter. Now, digital data for sound can be sent as you saw through the USB port in a computer, but for regular home audio applications, the two most common connectors are coaxial connectors and optical connectors. Coaxial is the one that looks like an RCA jack, although it works by sending a digital signal with electrical pulses rather than analog sound waves. An optical audio cable, also known as Toslink, is transmitted over a beam of light, but those cables deserve videos of their own. The point is that these are different methods of sending the same digital signal. With the player all set up and with Compact Disc itself being a digital medium through and through, 
Let's send a little bit more of Rush's snakes and arrows through the DAC and see how it sounds. So to sum everything up, the DAC works through all three ports, and I'm really happy about that. And with that all well and good though, let's go back to the original issue of the speakers not working, because that's still going to be a big problem. So here we are. We're back to the initial issue of what the heck was wrong with my computer speakers in the first place then? And I kind of realized that after I was filming. Uh, I came over here and, as with a lot of the things that I own, I got these speakers second hand. And when I got them, ordinarily what you'd see on the back of a speaker is something like this. I realize the camera's not focusing all that well, but uh, come on, there we go. Um, so left output, I took to mean that this was the left speaker. Uh, because ordinarily, that's what would happen. Speakers are usually designed to say this is the left one, that's the right one. I mean, any pair of headphones has an L and R to tell you which, which side goes where. Now, the other speaker, interestingly enough, That's the telltale sign. Come on. It says left input. So essentially, uh, to put it as concisely as possible, the actual way to fix this is to do this. Problem solved. That's really the left speaker. This is really the right speaker. And honestly, yes, I do wish I had figured that out beforehand, but uh, had I not even had this issue in the first place, I never would have gotten the DAC to try it out at all. And I kind of like having my computer hooked up to my hi-fi system anyway. It's just fun for me. Anyways, if you like this video, thanks for watching, and remember, everyone makes mistakes. And with that being said, I try to fact check as much as I can. Things tend to slip by my notice though, so if you spot something that I say that's wrong or you want me to elaborate on, just let me know in the comments section and I'll make a follow-up video.